I'm talking. All right, how about now? They won't be able to hear you as well, but... Can you guys hear us now? They should be able to. I can see it. I know, but can... Yeah, but... Can they hear me through the microphone? Hey, Mike, what's up, buddy? Okay, I got a yes from Terry Landry. Can you guys hear me clear? Jock Scott said, I can read lips. He said, Tyler's a better fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. They, they're saying good to go. So. I hear you. Okay. <laughs> Tyler's a better fisherman. Yeah. Well, you know. Everybody needs a laugh. All right, 702. We'll give it a minute or two. Uh, we're up to 15 live people. Woohoo! Yeah. So. All right, for those of you that are watching, if you didn't see the caption, go ahead, share this to your personal page. So, not to any groups or anything, but share it to your personal page. And everyone that shares it to their personal page will be entered into a chance to win a Norvice auto bobbin. We don't, we don't want to spam the groups like we did before, but we still want to go and get it out there. So Yeah, we're trying to get the numbers up. Um, Facebook has this new algorithm, and it's, it's, it's killing us as, as far as numbers go. But, um, yeah, if uh, go, go ahead and share. We're going to give away two bobbins tonight. So I guess that means this one is sponsored by Norvice, right? I guess so. Um, it's got O'Neill's fly fishing in, up in the corner. And so. Norvice, yeah. So, um, so yeah, we're going to give away two. So share it to your personal page. We, we kind of got in a, a, a little bit of trouble with all of the sharing to the groups and stuff, especially last year around March Madness time where, where there, was, there was a lot of Norvice um, – media that was being shared to various different groups and and we had some moderators contact us and and they were they were not so happy some of it i know some of them were decent some of them not so much yeah some of it i mean it's we're 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 sharing fly tying videos to a fly tying page and the moderator got upset so i I don't i don't understand it but yeah any um, deal on automatic bobbins tonight no we're not running any sale or anything like that No, but you do have a chance to win, too. Everybody share it. Whomever shares it to their personal page, we will pick a winner. And then I've got a trivia question, and whoever answers first um, on this feed, uh, we will give away a second auto bobbin with the correct answer. 705. We have 17 people. Oh, boy. Maybe Facebook Lives aren't coming back. (laughs) I mean, hell, this time last year we were pulling two, three hundred people. Yeah. It's pretty bad. It's hard to sell stuff to people that already, the 20 people already have the voice. I know, the 20 people and everybody (laughs) already owns everything. All right, I guess get started because if people are scrolling through and see you tying a fly, they're more likely to tune in than scrolling through and seeing you yeah, sitting there. Yeah, true. All right, so we're going to do uh, two snakehead flies tonight. Uh, we, I was just down, what was it, weekend before last? No, last, last weekend, weekend. Last weekend, fishing with, uh, with Braden for uh, two days. We spent about, oh, God, 20 hours out, out on the skiff and... Uh, we moved, I believe, two snakehead. It, um, it, it's just, it, it's rough. We, we did this last year, um, two days after the um, the hurricane went through, um, and we did the same thing last year, and we didn't catch any fish. And we said, uh, you know, hey, let's uh, let's try it again two days after hurricane. Well, guess what? We won't be doing it a third time two days after hurricane. So, live and learn, I guess. But. Oh yeah, it it's opening weekend of football. It is opening weekend of football. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but, that, I mean, that... <laughs> really, football or come watch me tie. Which would you rather do? Don't everybody answer at once. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start off with uh, with a fly. This is this is one of my designs. 
this this was designed specifically for snakehead and it's it's the um it's the fly that um that was on the 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 picture for the the facebook event that we posted so as we mentioned we're giving away two um two bobbins the first one is just share it to your um to your personal page and then we'll pick a winner everybody that shares will pick one winner and then the second one is a trivia question and the trivia question is the name of of this fly what what is the significance of the name of the fly okay now it i will tell you this it has to do with our last name so let's say you're doing that pretty early what's that <laughs> they give anything with the trivia question you normally well, have between flies yeah but I'm all the gonna, kids. i'm going to give the name of the fly so all right so it has to do with our last name i'm watching you and football <laughs> that's funny most um, of the Canadian people were saying t- yeah, flies because they don't care yeah, about what's, football what's, what's like the football? Americans yeah, do. Right. <laughs> right. Okay, so the name of this fly, it, it has to do with, with our last name and our heritage. And if if you can figure this out, now remember, this is a snakehead fly. It's, it's a fly designed for northern snakehead. The name of the fly is the St. Patrick. Okay, so if you can figure out what the significance of that is, and I'll tell you, it has to do with our last name. Um, the first person to post it up here in the comments, the correct answer will win a uh, Norvice Auto Bobby. All right, so we're going to start off. I've got a, and, and Snakehead are, are big, mean, nasty, powerful fish. So everything that you want to tie for them needs to be heavy duty. So we're going to start off. We're going to tie on a, uh, a Blaine Chocolates uh, Flyman. It's a 40 millimeter big game shank or, or musky shank is, is what we call it. It's a big, big, heavy duty shank. And to that, we are going to attach a, it's a Gamagatsu SC17 tarpon hook in a size 2 off. All right. Yes, we are Irish. Somebody said, Mike Hawkins said, there's no he's, snakes in he's Ireland. Close. He's close. Why are there no, Why snakes, are there in no snakes in Ireland? What is the tale behind that? And I've got my Norvite shank jaws in here. Is the hook upside down? It's going to be hook point down. Oh, I thought you ran up to back. I, I did, and then I changed it. Okay. And this is... Uh, All right, so it's an Irish fly. Yes, it is. You got to move the camera. Oh, boy. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we've got our hook on. And there we go. Who got Saint, it? Uh, Rick Flink. St. Patrick ran the snakes ran out of all Ireland. The snakes out of Ireland. That's why we call this the, uh, the St. Patrick. There you go. Very good on your Irish history. That goes to show you what happened when we're really bored sitting around trying to figure up a name for a fly. Yeah. We get that in depth to it. Mm-hmm. Alright, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to just close this gap and then you want to stay you be very careful with this right here and then there's another one here. you got to be very careful with them because um, they can and they will cut your thread like nobody's business. So I'm just going to close that up and this is something that I don't do very often, but for this pattern, it kind of is a necessity. I'm going to whip finish, and I'm going to cut the thread. And I, I, like I said, I normally don't do that, but it is a necessity for this. All right, now we're going to slip one of these little guys on here. And we have to work at this a little bit to get this little thing onto the onto the shank. This is Rainies. They're called they're called Pee Wee Pops. Okay. And what they are, yeah Rick, I, I know you're Irish. <laughs> so basically what they are, these are the little um, the little panfish popper heads. So you know tying it conventionally you would tie them on this way onto a hook, put a little you know a little skirt or some hackle or something hanging off of it and it would be a little little popper for panfish. We're going to use it a bit differently. 
All right, so they already, they're, they're pre-punched with a hole, but we've got to get a bit of a bigger hole in there. So I'm going to run my bodkin through it, and then I'm going to take, I'm going to take my, my fine point scissors, and I'm going to stick them, I'm going to stick them down in a hole, and then I'm going to open the scissors up, and I'm just going to work that, that hole bigger so that we can get it over top of the shank of the hook. Now, if I had my choice, this this pattern is going to be all white, which is a which is a good uh, all white is a good snakehead color. I, I like all white for a lot of colors. For this particular pattern, if I could find them, and they're very hard to find, they do exist. If I could get this little popper head in red, I would use red for this for this particular pattern. But as it stands, I can't find red, so we're back to using white which is fine and basically we're going to slide that down all the way down like so okay now I got to get it back off of there because I got to get some glue on here but you always want to test fit these things first yeah they can hear my clicking with the mouse because we're using the uh, computer oh, using audio the instead of yeah well, that's that's actually good because the, the last time I had some people contact me privately and say that they couldn't hear you talking because we were just going over the the microphone that I have over yeah, here. Yeah, and we couldn't do both because it was echoing. Yeah. All right, so a little bit of is that the gap? Yeah. After you get that done, we're gonna fix the focus of this camera real quick. Oh, the camera's out of focus. It's good, but okay. it's not good enough. All right. Well, there we go. Whammo, we are done. All right. All right. Give me a quarter turn, one way or the other. Alright. Other way. There. A little bit back. First way? Yeah. Just a little bit. Shit. A little bit more. A little bit more. Same way? Yeah. That damn light turns on. I know it doesn't. I don't know why it turns on. Uh, Go back the other way. <laughs> <laughs> well, it the light turns on and it makes it harder to see. A little more. We can work with that. Okay. It's hard for it. It's hard for me to tell without like thread wraps or something on there. Okay. It's just well, the bare I'll shank. Put some thread wraps on it. So as we mentioned, it's it's been a long weekend. We uh, our first early duck season opened up yesterday, so we scouted for teal Friday night. Didn't see any. So then like a couple morons went and sat in the blinds anyway on Saturday. Didn't shoot any. Then today we went crabbing. We just finished up a... And we did catch some. We did catch some crabs, no doubt. We just finished up a, a nice crab dinner right before we came down here. So uh, Sean, it fishes hook point down. It's down, yes. <sighs> the original ones and the one that's in the picture that... We used for this um, for this Facebook Live shows the hook point as being up, and the first handful that I did, I did that way, and then I changed them. Okay. Yeah, Michael Collier said that's not really true. St. Patrick brought Christianity to Ireland. Snakes is a uh, it's what they called the Protestants, isn't it? Uh, there's a whole bunch of mm, yeah it's... type of things there, but I know this. There ain't no snakes in Ireland. I know that. <laughs> and trust me, I don't keep company with snakes. So, all right. So we've got our, our little little foam head on, and this is going to do two things. This obviously this is a top water pattern, and it's going to help um, the buoyancy of the pattern with this big heavy hook and this big heavy shank. It takes a little bit more than just this uh, Flyman double barrel head to float it. This this will float it. Um, and you can fish it, but this little deal on here floats it better. So this is going to give us a, a little um, little bit of flotation. Um, it's also going to act as a spreader for the rubber legs. So basically what's going to be coming out of the back of this fly, these are just um, just silicone white rubber legs that you get you know, for, for doing legs on, on nymphs and, and things like that. Um, we're going to use a lot of them, but th that's, that's basically what it is here. So, I am going to take, and I'm going to cut these in half. Is that it? 
What size is that hook? It is a two watt. Okay. It's a it's a Gamagatsu SC seventeen tarpon two watt hook. What are you playing with it again? Yeah. You played with it a minute ago and moved it all around and it wound up being right in the same spot. All right, so I've taken one full set of rubber legs and I cut them in half. Now you notice I didn't cut the the ends where they're where they're still together because I'm going to use that as my tying point. And we're going to take one. This is a really really easy fly to tie. It does not take long at all. And don't worry about this. This is all going to get covered up. So it's going to look not so great and that's fine. So basically we're just going to take and we're going to wrap this right up against the front of that um, that little rubber uh, or the, that that uh, popper head. Okay. So we did one on top. Now I'm going to index the vise around, and we're going to do one on the bottom. Just using a loose pinch wrap just to get a hold of all these rubber legs first, and then I'll just wrap this down like so. Been a while since we've been on. What's everybody been up to? Has anybody been fishing? Anybody catching anything? Seems like uh, we've been out of touch, which of course we have. Okay. So now I'm going to take my hair clip and I'm going to clip as many of these on here as I can. Yeah, come here. Try and desperately to not stab myself with that hook. Okay. Clip it on from the opposite side of the hook. <laughs> What's that? You could clip it on from the opposite side of the hook. Just going to put a little zap gap on here. And then we're just going to wrap this in. Now we have, we have played around with a rattle on this fly snakehead really seem to respond to rattles and basically what I've done I just tie the rattle right to the shank of the hook and just leave it there and and that we're it's it's kind of new in the development of this fly that's why I didn't show it here tonight but uh, I got myself <clears throat> but it is um, it is an option if uh, if you wanted to do that Okay. Kevin Griffin, like, does an hour ago count for fishing? I'm like, well, fishing is fishing. Fishing is fishing, that's right. Okay, now. All right, so we've got to put. What I'm doing, I'm test. I'm kind of test fitting where the head is going to be. Because we've got, once I get the head on, there's a, um, there's this gap right here that we have to fill up. And I've got a cool material that I use that I kind of happened on by mistake. Oh, I forgot is, about that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we were at the International Fly Tying Symposium yep. and got like that in the grab bag, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's called, um, it's a, a hairline product. It's called wire-free synthetic fox brushes. Okay. And it's, I, I, I don't, I honestly don't know what it is. It's a, it's it's like a craft fur kind of material. It's it's got a little bit of flash to it, like a little bit of, of trans translucency to it. It's it's kind of a cool product. And and when I was designing this pattern, I was looking for something to fill this in, and I didn't want to do. We we had been doing the the wrap the um, the polar chenille with the hackle, which we're going to do for the second fly. We had been doing that on like every fly that, that we were tying, and I just wanted to go a different route. And I was rummaging through a bunch of material, and like two, three years ago at the International Fly Tying Symposium, Hairline gave out a grab bag of um, what was going to be their new materials for, for that particular year. And this stuff was in it, and I'm like, hey, that, you know, that, that'll work. And, and it, it, it worked perfectly. It's synthetic, it's not going to hold water, it's not going to weight the pattern down. Gives it a little bit of movement, but really all it is is to fill in the um, the gap in between the head and the 
the tail. And this this was is or was a fly designed for snakehead for sure. Um, large mouth bass, small mouth bass, any bass will absolutely crush this fly. And when I get it done, you'll see why. Now we're tying it. I'm going to tie it in the slider style. You can absolutely tie this as a popper, and and it works. It works great as a popper. Um, if you're tying it as a slider, you put the head on this way. If you're tying it as a popper, you put the head on that way. That's the only difference in the pattern. Everything else is identical. Now we're going to stroke this back a little bit without hitting the camera. And we're just going to, that's why I wanted to get all of those things clipped in there. Sean said, Braden Miller, they said you suck as a snakehead guide before you got on. I did not say that. I caught one with Braden the week before, yeah. and we missed three, no. and I put three nice bass in the boat. So, Braden, Braden worked his butt off as as hard as any guy that I've ever paid to get me a snakehead, and I mean, we were trying. It just that that hurricane and that that massive influx of of fresh water just had the 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 marsh all kind of. Braden even tried to give me swimming lessons too. Yeah. Well, I, I let Braden fish for a while. I was pulling the boat while he was fishing. And uh, he didn't catch anything. Of course, he was casting a hell of a lot better than I was. I got back at the at the house that night and he, he went upstairs and went to sleep. He was he was beat. But I was talking to Casey and I'm like like your son made me feel old today and she's like why and I'm like I'm trying to cast the way that he casts and I'm a pretty good caster I'm not great but I'm pretty good I, I couldn't I cannot cast the way Braden cast that, that, that kid is phenomenal and I started feeling my shoulder getting ready to blow out again because the last time I hurt my shoulder I was trying to do something that a 24 year old guy was doing so I figured I better stop so what you're saying is, if Braden didn't break your elbow last year, you'd have been able to cast better this year. And well, no, that fish. was my that was my non-casting elbow. Oh, okay. That's the one you blame if you strip set wrong. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So we're just going to take this stuff and brush it back. There's not not a whole lot to it. It it just it it's kind of like a like a filler uh, material, and it works perfect for for this application where you're just trying to fill up spots or area on the. Um, fly it's cool material I'm, I'm not usually one to jump on new materials being the latest and greatest and all that I, I just I don't I don't really buy into that but this is a is a cool material I can think of some other yeah you had me order like six different we had well, yeah <laughs> the, the, the little the little bonus pack that they gave us had one color and then once I I'm like we ordered literally every color they have oh I'm sorry so yeah, we mentioned we're uh, we had a busy week, and I feel bad like a whipped dog's ass right now. So, <laughs> Sean goes all the pictures I see of Braden Miller. He's conventional fishing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now we're going to lay down just a little thread base here, and I'm going to whip finish this. Sean, better be careful. Yeah, really. Get Casey after him. <laughs> Don't get Mama Bear after you. That's all right. We'll pair those two up on the fishing trip for a day <laughs> in November. Oh, uh, on a steelhead trip? Yeah. yeah. They can go freeze together. <laughs> Ain't that bad. All right. So now we've got our legs on. We've got our shank. We've got our hook. We've got our little popper head underneath there that gives us some buoyancy and acts as a spreader. Put a rattle on it if you, if you if you do. I would put the rattle right on the right on the shank of the hook. Uh, we've been, we've been working on that. Steelhead, or I'm sorry. Now you got me saying steelhead. Snakehead are unbelievably strong. Their jaws and and we have had some issues where rattles are breaking when they when they bite down on it. So we're still working on that. But it, it is definitely doable and definitely recommended. Okay, so now I'm going to punch the hole. Now. When I punch the hole in these in these double barrel poppers, I used to go in here, and I would try to like use this this 
spine that's on the top and kind of guide my bodkin through. And I would inevitably, when I get to this side, it would be like way off, way high, way low or whatever. So now what I do, I, I actually start it on this side and, and I, can, I can line it up right where I want it. And if it's a slider, I want it to be on the low side and I can just start working that through. And then I can see it when it's coming through this end and I can kind of guide it right through the hole. There you go. And that way I can, I can usually get this thing um, on the back side. I can get the hole poked where I want it and I'm not kind of leaving it up to chance. And now with this, Now you're sucking up because you went too far. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to do the same thing with my with my scissors. I'm going to jab the points in, and then I'm going to open them up so that it, it will open this hole. Because you got to get that hole. These these um, um, big game shanks have a big eye on the front. And I do it on the front, and I do it on the back. Just gives me just opens this hole up so I can get it on this shank and get the head seated where I want it. Remember, always test fit your heads, especially on this pattern. And I gotta open that hole up a little more. Terry Landry. Do you sell those Norvite scissors? No, that was uh, some outfit in Pakistan or something, and they wanted me to buy scissors, so they made us a sample of... Uh, they were, like, like berating us yeah. to send us a sample, so we let us send us a sample and then said, yeah, we're not buying from somewhere not made in USA. Yeah, made in USA. But they're really sharp. They're, they're good scissors, but I'm just, I'm not buying from Pakistan. I just, I'm not doing it. That's our new slogan, you, uh, Norvice made in the USA or not made at all. So, All right, that looks good. So now I'm going to pull this off. And that, around this time of year, that kind of has a whole another meaning. Hey, Jody, what's up, buddy? All right. Now we're going to put a little zap gap on here. Hey, my zap gap's getting thick. Okay. Now, remember, you got one shot. And if you don't get it on there, you're going to wind up cutting this head off and doing it again. Make sure that it's oriented properly because I have glued these heads on upside down. I had to, I had to hook like that, and it was, it was upside down. This pattern is not a huge deal. I do want the hook point to ride down on this one. But the original ones, the hook point ran up. But I have on a hook glued these popper heads on the wrong way. So get it lined up, get it on there, and get it home. Now, this is clearly, it's really for aesthetics, I think. I don't know if it does anything for the pattern. I'm sure it does help keep the, keep the head on a little bit. But with all that super glue, that I don't think. You would have to rip that head apart to move that it. Head going anywhere. But I do like the way this looks on the front. So I just build up a little thread dam on the front of the... Uh, Turn whip finishes. And this is, I'm using Beavis uh, 6 op Super Thread or Ultra Thread, whatever they call it. Um, 
good good thread for tying heavy uh, heavy flies. Okay, now for the eyes, this is a um, it is a medium um, double barrel head, so it'll take the four millimeter eyes. And for some reason, on this fly, I like the red dragon eyes. I just I just think the all white body. Um, and the red eyes, they, they just really, really pop. I just think it looks cool. And they last about one whole fish. <laughs> well, the, the way I'm going to do these, they'll last a little longer. Where is my super glue? My squeeze super glue. Oh, it was no good. We had to throw it out. We don't oh, have okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then I'll just use a, just a dab. As I, I usually like the, the squeeze super glue gel. comes in like the gray and blue container and you squeeze the little blue things on the side i feel like every time i go to pick that bottle up it's bad it could be so we're just going to put a dab of that zappy gap in the eye socket that's another thing i like about the double barrel heads they have the eye socket that's that's cast into the head and um if, if you like tyler said they last about one fish if you glue eyes on the rainy heads which, which we do use a lot. They don't have an eye socket, so you're just kind of gluing them on the side of the the um, the foam. It, it's hard to get them to stick for any length of time, but these with the eye sockets here and the way that I'm going to do them, they, they will last a little bit, a, a couple, two or three. I got that one upstairs that's all chewed up that still has the eyes on it. Yeah, I did one last year where I just filled the eye socket with Solarez Black. Mm-hmm. Just to give them a bullseye. Which you can't do on the rainies because you don't have an eye socket to uh, fill up. Right. But I, I do like certain applications. I do like the rainies heads and, and I like them better than the double barrel heads. For certain things. But that's why we have a whole gamut of fly tying material behind me. eyeball in there and then I just I used the bodkin to put it in the eye socket and then I flipped around and that little half inch tool I used to just push down and just hold it there a second just to get the glue to it here okay and then what I do and this this is what makes them a bit more durable there it is a little solar as bone dry and I actually just had to microwave this one because it was getting thick. There's a little tip. If you have your solar res, especially the bone dry, if it starts getting thick, it'll get like clumpy and cloudy and thick. Put it in your microwave for about 10 seconds and it's as good as new. And I fill that entire eye socket up with uh, bone dry. Hit it with the light. Yeah, it works a lot better yeah, than it did last okay. time. Woo. And then we'll spin her around. Put a little solar res in that eye socket, fill it up. And this this really does make it a, a considerably uh, more durable with as, as far as your eyes go. Okay, and then one more. That little thread dam that I put on the front there. Just gonna put a little bit of bone dry on that. On the thread and kind of on the front of the uh, front of the popper head. A little much on there. Come on, there we go. And then I'll take and I'll spin the vise just to get that distributed evenly around the the face of the fly. Hit it with the torch. And bada bing, bada boom. There is. O'Neill's St. Patrick. This is a great, great snakehead fly. Good largemouth fly, too. Great largemouth fly. It would be a good um, um, smallmouth fly. Big gammer. Big gammer, okay. Yeah. It'd be a good smallmouth fly. But it's really just kind of, it's got that little that little foam head in there. And then the, um, the legs, the rubber legs all the way around kind of skirted like a hula popper and you can take 
if you choose and you can trim these so that they're a little bit more even don't have to be perfect there you go you want them just a little bit longer than the hook so they kind of encompass the hook um, and then you got your fox your synthetic fox and your popper head and even with the hook point down you'd be surprised if you're pulling it through the weeds this um, this head kind of takes the weeds and kind of kind of parts them pushes them aside and and this fly is is very very weedless for having a non weed guard protected hook so there you go simple easy and effective this is a killer killer fly for snake hits we fished it a little bit last week and it's kind of one of those ones it's one of the first ones that we designed so it winds up staying in the box a lot and then Braden put it on and he's like man I really do like that fly I'm like yeah I really like that fly too all right any questions on that Canadians out in force tonight that's because they don't have football to watch I mean they could watch our football yeah <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Nice fly. All right. Any questions before we start on the next one? No. I think just roll right into the next one before we start losing a couple of the people we have. <laughs> Damn. Apparently Rick wants his bobbin. Oh, I told him to message. <laughs> he, he already did. Okay. Second fly is going to be a frog popper that we fish for snakehead and um, I think I think Braden is on next week and if he is I want him to tie his new frog fly that we fished most of the the time um, down there last weekend He's taken a couple of, of design cues from a couple of different flies that put them together. And this is it, his his frog popper is I honestly I, I, I think it's a little better than this one. Um, it is just a killer, killer fly. So I hope I hope I can get him to tie that. But the other fly we were fishing was a jerk changer, so he'll probably want to tie that one. You hit the camera a couple times. Yeah, no, it's time. close. It's it's really close tonight. All right, so same platform, Flyman, forty millimeter big game shank, and Gamagatsu SC seventeen, two ot tarpon hook. No snakehead's going to bend that. And the first batch that I did. I, I honestly don't remember which hook I used, uh, but they got bad. And it was a hook that you wouldn't have thought that would have gotten bent. Now, this one I am going to do hook point up. And, oh, let me change thread. So we're going to go from Vivas 6 Ot Ultra Thread White to Vivas 6 Ot Ultra Thread Chartreuse. Got the question, what's so different with those jaws on the Norvice? Well, these are new shank jaws. So I'm, I'm using the shank jaw in the standard hub. So it, it kind of is like a pointed standard jaw. So you can see the, the shape of the jaws. They're a little bit longer. We made this, this set longer for tying um, longer streamers. You can put it in the standard hub, standard hub being the hub with the hole off center and line your hook shank up with the top of the jaw just like you do our large jaw or our standard inline and spin it and it will spin on center. It also comes with our center spin hub when you purchase the shank jaw because it was originally originally designed for tying on shanks like the intruder type shanks. So you can tie intruders, you can spin the vise, you can do all that stuff that we're used to doing with the center spin hub or 
you can take it out, put it in the standard hub, and tie on hooks the way that we always do. And we also offer a Magnum center spin hub, which is uh, a bit larger than our, our standard hub, which gives you a little more um, centrifugal force. All right, so I'm going to close this shank up. Corey Kendrick's on next week. Oh, okay. That'll be cool. I, I um, hey, that'll be good timing because you and I are going redfish fishing next weekend. So yeah, we're going. Yeah, I got a box full of his flies that he yeah. sent to us that we're going to bring down there. So Corey will probably do something redfish if I had to guess. Either that, or I think I sneeze again. <laughs> Oh, sorry, that was not I believe he's doing uh, something he with one, something with yeah, the yeah he's doing table, something yeah. with the dubbing brush table. Yeah, he's, he's really into that. He got a dubbing brush table a bit ago, and he's been doing some super cool blended brushes. Um, so yeah, I, I actually hope he does that. Okay, now I asked him to do that, so I hope so. Okay. <laughs> so now, beans, this one is hook point up. Oh, bear with me. Thought I had an extra laying around. I'll just pull one out of inventory. And because I am not nearly as dumb as I look, I'm going to take one of our Norvice bobbin synthetic um, caps to go over the bobbin. I clipped it off so it's a little shorter. And I'm going to put it right over that hook point, so that'll save me a trip to the ER. Okay, so... Oh, you wouldn't go to the ER. I'd yank it out right here on the live for well, everybody to see. Before. All right, so this is going to be a frog popper, and we're going to use Cohen's, um, Cohen's uh, creature legs. These are the two-and-a-half-inch. They're the large frog legs. Now, when you get them, all his stuff, when it comes... They're a, a chamois material, and when you get them, they're white, which is kind of cool because you can dye them any color you want. He, he has frog legs. He has, like, Mr. Twister legs. He has a whole bunch of um, um, Helgramite bodies and things. So when you get these, these are white, and then before we tie them on, they look like this. Okay, now this was taught to me by a friend of ours, um, Eric Snyder from Warm Water Specialties how to do this. So this is your standard large frog legs. You dye them in a product that's called Dynaflow. Okay, and it's a fabric dye. And you can get it on Amazon and they have every color under the rainbow. And this one is 818-818 chartreuse. Okay. So it's a product called Dynaflow. And it's basically a... a um, just just a, a, a it has the consistency of, of basically water and you shake it up and then what I do when I'm dying the legs is and I can't seem to find them right now I'll take my hackle pliers and I'll hold on this little tab here like so and then you just dunk this down in the in the um, bottle leave it there for for a couple seconds pull it up shake it off dry, and then set it on a paper towel. You let them dry overnight, and then what I do is I take a, um, a uh, dish towel, and I, I fold these inside a dish towel. So you have dish towel on the bottom, and then dish towel on the top. And then I take an iron, and I iron up and down the dish towel till it gets hot, and the heat sets the, the dye into the, um, into the chamois. And then to put the, the stripes on it, we use, it's, it's, uh, it's a fabric marker. I got this on Amazon too. The, the company is, is Marvy, but it's, a lot of it is in uh, French, and I can't read French. But if you look up Marvy fabric marker. We got a bunch of French speakers on here if they on want to Amazon, translate for yeah. us. <laughs> and this is a number 552, which is black. And then you just draw the stripes on so I don't obviously I don't do these one at a time when I'm doing them I'll, I'll do two or three packs and I'll have them all dyed and ready to go 
just a cool little thing really makes a, 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 a neat frog silhouette um, and it's it's just a just a cool thing to uh, to do I like the dyeing and all that kind of stuff so now I'm gonna set this on right there and I'm doing I'll do a couple loose wraps and then I'll kind of just manipulate this it is important that these legs are laying flat or perpendicular with with the um, you want them laying horizontal I guess that's a word I'm looking for if they're cocked to the side it will make when the pattern sitting in the water it will make the whole pattern cocked to the side these are kind of like a rudder and they really control how the thing floats when it's um, when it when you cast it when it's laying on top of the water so I'll just I'm gonna come around to the front and I'm gonna take a look and that looks good and we'll just tie this down come in here just a little bit of zap gap just to make sure it's not going to move get some on the bottom here and again this is a snakehead fly um, but it, this would be a, a killer, killer bass fly, smallmouth fly, anywhere where there's um, lily pads, obviously where frogs live, um, killer, killer fly. This one we're doing as a, um, as a, a popper. You can do this as a slider. Um, if I'm doing this fly as a slider, I like to use the rainy diver's head. I think that one has a bit of a better action when you're um, when you're stripping it as as a, a, a slider or a diving fly than the um, than the double barrel head does. The first pattern that I just did it it was not designed to dive. It was designed to stay on top, wake the water, and have those little legs in the back just going crazy. This one, as we're tying it, is going to be a popper. But if you want it to dive. Um, definitely use, I, I think the Rainey's head is going to be a bit better for you. Alright, so this one we are using a, uh, this is a large double barrel and it is green chartreuse is the color. They have two, they have a yellow chartreuse and a green chartreuse. This is the green chartreuse color. Okay, so we're going to be to about right there. So now we're going to do a complex twist. This is a uh, five to seven inch fluorescent chartreuse schloppen. And we're going to pick up, I think there's more five than there is seven inch ones in here. Uh, that should work. All right, so there's my feather. We're going to strip all this fluffy stuff off the bottom. How would you go about making it look injured? Just the way you strip it, pop it a couple times, stop it, pop it a couple times, stop it. What's that, the frog? Yeah. This one here? Yeah. Yeah, cast it out, pop it two, three times, and just let it sit. And most of the time, especially if it's bass or smallmouth, that they'll hit it while it's sitting while it's sitting there doing nothing. Snakehead, you will, a lot of times you will see them come up, you'll see them wake on the fly and they'll come up behind it and, and just just obliterate it. But yeah, pop it and just let it sit there. And it, it just kind of rides up and down in the, um, with, the, with the waves on the water. All right, so I've picked all the, the fuzzy stuff off the bottom and then I've taken this and I've, I've, I've preened these, we're gonna tie this in by the tip and I preen these these fibers back. So we're going to take and we're going to tie this in by the tip, and just so it doesn't pull out. I tied the tip in and then I folded it back. So I tied the tip in, wrapped forward, folded the extra tip back, and then wrapped back. So I've got the tip folded in, so it shouldn't go anywhere.
Oh, good night, Jody. Good luck tomorrow, buddy. All right, so now we have polar chenille in yellow. And I'm going to just cut a little bit off the end. I'm going to leave the core on, but I'm just kind of cutting the, the actual chenille part off of it. This just to give me a tie-in point. So I'm using my thread to mark how far I want this to come up. I'm going to put my half hitch right there. And that's how far I want it to come. You can't, you can't go crazy with this because if you put too much on, you still have to get that head on. And if, if you use up all the real estate with material, you're not going to be able to get your head on. Okay, now I'm going to use with this one. Being the hook isn't in the vise, I, I don't spin. I don't use the vise to spin this, because the hook has a tendency to start flopping around and, and get tangled up with things. So I'm going to use my loon um, dubbing twister with the the little alligator clip end on it, and I'm going to clamp the polar chenille and the feather together down here at the stem. And I'm going to twist it. And I'm going to take my little, my little brush here and I'm just going to brush it out so nothing gets matted up or um, twisted on itself. And what this does, and you guys have seen me do this before, I do this technique a lot. This is a super cool technique. What this does is it takes that, um, that polar chenille and it wraps it around the stem of the feather and it makes this very very durable you can you can kind of see there see how it's, how the the polar chenille is twisted around the feather so it kind of reinforces the um, the stem of the feather and it, and it makes it makes it a really durable fly yeah uh Braden said that you decide to bring hurricanes down when it, you come to fish. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah trust me. Uh, Braden goes, hey, Tyler, guess what you missed tonight? Buddy, I have no idea. So I'm just hoping a hurricane doesn't come through and mess up our redfish next weekend. Yeah. I don't have one of them. All right, so now I've got that all twisted up. And I'm just going to take, and this is why I put that little guard on the uh, They probably got like Jake's Place or something for dinner. That's what I missed tonight. Oh. Uh, well, we had a pretty good dinner. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we caught ours. <laughs> they were big this time, I know too. they were big. Yeah, we had Mama Norvice was up working the net today. Oh, uh, vanilla bean cheesecake. Oh, I ain't getting no cheesecake. Yeah, why didn't your mom make any desserts when I was down there? What's up with that? I ain't getting no cheesecake. So you can see I'm wrapping. I do one wrap, and then I stroke these back. And this just gives it a cool kind of green and yellow kind of belly thing going on there. Just make sure that you stroke them back. And if you stroke them back while they're on the feather, sometimes they'll lay a little better. I'm not, each wrap is, is in front of the previous wrap. I'm not, I'm not wrapping over top of the previous wrap. I'm wrapping in front of it. No, oh, Ryan Bujika's on here. Hey, there Ryan, he how's it going? Hey, Ryan, what's up, man? Okay, now just you can't see it because I got the the um, the camera's going to be blocked. But I'm just going to take my pointer finger, and I'm going to just push that right against the the shank, and then I can let go of the um, of the dubbing twister. And then with the auto bobbin, boom, I'm right back in, and I'm ready to tie. And I'll go three behind, three in front, and then I'll go three behind again. And I'll go three in front. Now I've got that good and tied in. I can come in here, and I can 
clip off the excess feather and the um, polar chenille. And now's a good time to just take and, and brush this thing out. So I brush it off forward first. Again, I'm sure you guys have seen me do this before I do this on a lot of my flies. It's a super cool technique. And then I will brush it back. And see how that gives you a cool little kind of blended color skirt for your for your popper or your slider. Bada bing. Yeah, I should break out whammo. Yeah. Bada bing, like I watched the Sopranos last night or something. Alright, so there's our skirt. So we've got our, our hook, our shank, we've got our legs on, and we've got our skirt. Now I'm going to test fit this. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. We're doing a popper. Got it on backwards. No laser dub? No, there will be laser dub. I'm just test fitting to find out how much of it I need. Yeah, that could even go right on top of that skirt. All right. And on the last fly we used... On this one, we use that um, that fox, that synthetic fox, to kind of fill the gap between the the slider head and the and the rest of the fly. On this one, we're going to use we're going to use two colors of laser dub. So I've got fluorescent chartreuse and yellow. Typically, I do the bottom color first, so the yellow is going to be on the bottom. And we're just going to pinch off just a little bit of this. And now I'm going to, you've seen me do this before, I'm kind of pinching it in the middle and then pulling it apart and then putting it back together. Pinching it in the middle, pulling it apart, and putting it back together. And what that does, that kind of lines up all the fibers so that they're all, you know, when you get them out of the bag, they're all matted and twisted up. And then when you do this, it gets the fibers going up and down. Well, we're not using that one anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to put it on the bottom, and I'm going to use one loose wrap, and I want this to be roughly 360 degrees around the bottom of the shank. And when I get it, I'm going to put a couple of, about three good tight wraps, right on, right on, one right on top of one another. And I'm going to index this around. I'm sure that frog is going to be very good for musky. That's something we don't we don't see a lot of guys throwing frog flies for musky. They're usually throwing those great big, like T bone and 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 um, game changers and and big streamers like that. I imagine a musky would eat a frog, right? <coughs> Stephen Nimick said he was guiding a guy fishing for smallmouth and had like a 50 inch musky chasing the frog. Really? Never would have landed it on 12 pound fluoro, but. All right, so I'm doing the same thing. I'm just pulling these, pulling these apart, and then stacking them back in the middle, getting all the fibers lined up, and then I'm going to put in on the top, and I'm going to do a loose wrap, and just kind of let my bobbin hang there, and I'm just kind of pushing this down and manipulating this so it goes all around the top 180 degrees of the hook shank. Three good tight wraps, then I'll take the green, which is the top half, and fold it back. Now my thread is in front of the green. I'll take the yellow, which is the bottom half, fold that back, and then I'll wrap my thread right back over top of it. Hey, Casey said she made the white chocolate vanilla bean cheesecake for Braden's birthday. You were there last week on his birthday. You didn't get no cheesecake. I ain't get no white chocolate vanilla bean cheesecake. Apparently, they smoked all kinds of stuff today. Well, she smoked a bunch of stuff last week, too, so... That's all right. We ate fresh caught crabs today. I can't complain. I guess she used some of that meat church stuff today for the fruit. Oh, yeah. Okay. So now we're going to whip finish. Cut our thread off. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to just take my 
my laser dub collar and I'm going to brush it forward and then brush it back and it should veil right back over top of that that um, complex twist schloppen and uh, polar chenille all right almost home I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to start at the back of my popper head and I'm going to push my bodkin through kind of guiding it up so that it comes out the, the front of the fly just like so Shannon Messer Domino's <laughs> Here's something I found on the web. Alexa off. Oops. Appar I don't... Apparently we can't say that with Alexa in the background. Alright. Now I'm doing the same thing with my scissors. I'm pushing them in and then I'm opening them up. And it's just giving me a bit of a bigger hole because I've got this. If you look, you see how big that eye is that I've got to get this popper head over. But it's it's worth it these heavy duty shanks when you're fishing for um, snakehead and then you know somebody said something about a musky yeah I, um, I I I want the bigger heavy duty shank and I want the bigger heavy duty hook for sure. All right, I'm gonna test fit it. Beautiful. Oh, sh it's a popper. I'm going to put this head on backwards. There we go. That's better. You know how he was just saying sometimes he messes up and puts uh, it on the wrong way? Uh -huh. Well. Okay. So now I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm just going to jam them in that hole just, just so that it doesn't close up while I'm putting the super glue on. Definitely need some new zappa gap. <sighs> my nose is doing a hundred yard dash. Yeah, Braden just told me to tell you to stop sniffing. I can't help it. My allergies are killing me today. All right, get it on there and send her home. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Now we're going to do the eyes the same way that we just did the other batch. Just a little dab down in that eye socket. And this is a large uh, head, so it uses a six millimeter eye. And then on the frog, there they are. I like the yellow dragon eyes. I think they look cool on a frog. Same deal, take my bodkin, get one of the eyes, until I hadn't tied for a while, because my hands are cramping up something fierce. Yeah, Corey Kendrick says he uses a, a bobbin cleaner heated with a lighter to punch holes, and mm -hmm. it goes through much easier. Yeah. Bone dry, fill that eyeball socket up, hit it with the torch, whammo! You can see the smoke coming off of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see it on Facebook, I can, I can see, see it, it on OBS. Doing the eyes this way, they really, it really, really makes them a lot more durable. I didn't even know Corey was watching. Well, good, if you're watching, Corey, what are you tying next week? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they can see the smoke. At least Terry could see it. Yeah. Okay, and a little 
them dry. Who makes the UV lamp? It's Solares. It's Solares. Yeah. They, they, right now on the market, without a doubt, they have the best light cured acrylic line of products out there. Bar none. We'll take a little hook guard off, and there you go. So when he lays on the water, he's going to look like this, or I guess he'll look like this from the bottom. The legs will kind of flare out, and you pop him and just let him sit there. And the hook is right up here, tucked in behind the collar, so it stays weedless. And the popper head kind of pushes the, um, the weeds and stuff out of the way. Killer, killer, killer snakehead pattern. Killer bass pattern. Killer smallmouth pattern. If you want to... You can punch a hole through the side and put some rubber legs on the back of the head so it looks like the front legs of the frog. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I, I don't know that it really adds anything to the to the finished product, but it, they last about one fish. Yeah. And if I can get him to stay up there, there you go. So there's our. We didn't really name that one. I don't know. All I know well, is well, we a... have the, the the twist and pop, which is the one that looks like a fish. That may be the only one we have right now because I sold some of them. <laughs> so this could be the, you got this, old man. This could be the twist and pop frog. Yeah. Yeah, you sold those great big ones that were literally like bigger than my hand that I thought I used. Uh... <sighs> this is. These are the extra large legs. <laughs> Here, I'm going to go to the, re the full camera. Go to the so, full one? Okay. Yeah. There's the extra large. Now hold the fly up next to it. All right. So that's the large. That's the extra large. And I tied a bunch of, the, not a bunch, probably half a dozen, and um, had the legs all dyed and everything. And I had them sitting on the, on the table as a display. And I think I was off giving a presentation or something, and I came back, and, like, all six of them were gone. And I'm like, where, where'd all the frog flies go? And Tyler's like, I sold them. I got and like 15 bucks each for them. I, well, I, I know. At least you did get enough money for them. They, they, they were worth yeah. every penny of that. Yeah. But uh, then I'm like, man, I don't have any more big frogs. So. But there you go, guys. There, there's two, two good surface flies. I love fishing surface flies for any, any fish, but... Really, snakehead are, are tailor-made for eating on top or eating at something just under the surface. Um, so we'll have, you know, this one, that's, that's kind of become a, a must-have. Brayden and I were talking about this on the boat. We've got this one. We've got that slider that Grant makes, that one that looks like a little sunfish, um, which he did on a live. Um, Braden's frog which is is similar to this but the legs the way he does the legs is super super cool um that's a must-have and, and a jerk changer and really that kind of covers it um i'm sure we will continue to um to tweak and work with and design flies but you know if you got an area where where snakehead are um throw that one and just just drag it across the top and let it wake and let those those uh, you know rubber legs back there just do their thing, and um, they 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 will absolutely crush it. Tim, when you go to Maine, go fish at Glacier Lake. Glacier Lake. Yeah, that. yeah. Yeah. It. I don't know. We may be up in Maine next year. We've been we playing might around be. with the idea. Yeah. So, are you using shank jaws in the offset hub? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Look at, um, go look at the last couple of, um, of Facebook lives on the YouTube that, uh, that Braden did. This is the only, vi the only jaw that he ties on now. I don't, I don't think he, he even uses the other, any of the other, um, three this, jaws. This is the only jaw most of our people tie on at this point, unless they're tying something really big or really small. Yeah. Yeah. So... All right, anybody have any... My ideas about flies and large... I love fishing big flies, Rick. I love it. 
you don't catch as many fish. Um, I am, at least on some species, I'm, I'm past the catching a bunch of fish. Like, I don't, I don't need to catch another 14-inch smallmouth in my life. I, I, I just don't need to. I will, but I don't need to. Um, so the stuff that we're throwing for smallies, you, you, you would, like, think we were crazy. But, you know, we've, had, we, we've done it kind of with smallmouth, so we're really big fish hunting. Um, bass, same thing. I don't need to catch another little bass in, in my lifetime. So, you know, we'll throw these and even bigger around lily pads and stuff for largemouth. And um, like I say, you don't catch as many, but the ones that you do are typically quality fish. So, Yeah, Michael Collier, that frog fly will be great for the large the ponds downstate for largemouth. Yeah, I did, I did a version of that at, at the Saltwater Club a couple years ago. It was the all white one, and we call it the zombie frog, and it's it's basically the same the same thing, but it's 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 white. The legs are white, the head's white, the skirt is white, and um, it. Um, Rick, Fink, I never wanted to catch a bass or pike until now. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, pike. That uh, yeah, bass. Eh, I, I you know if it, it, it's kind of like if there's nothing else. Hey, smallmouth are also bass. Well, yeah, well, bass is largemouth. But um, yeah, we're on the striper trip, and there's bluefish and striper out there, and I hook into one, and me and the guide are yelling, "It's a bass! It's a bass! It's a bass!" And Dad's going, "Why are there largemouth out here?" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. so, all right. Any more questions, guys? Any more questions? We'll hang out here for another couple minutes, and then we're going to hit it. And next week is going to be um, Corey Kendrick. Corey Kendrick, and I'm. Pretty sure it, he's, he's on that dubbing brush table. He's going to do something on the dubbing brush table. He, yeah. If you've looked at our Instagram, we've been posting some of his stuff, and he's doing some super cool blended brushes that um, that you, you, you make the brush, and you wrap it on the hook, and there's a perfect multi-colored, multi-toned bait fish. So I, I hope that, that that's what he's going to share with everybody. Uh, it uh, came in late. Check out the replay. It, it it'll be here and then we'll post it um we'll post it up on the um YouTube YouTube page tomorrow. Uh James R. Bass, any future upgrades for the fine point? Um not right now. I I, I do you have something in mind? Because I don't really know of anything that we could do any different to, to make the, the fine point better. Um we do have some new products coming out. Um, they canceled IFTD. We were going to unveil one of our, our super cool new products that everybody's been asking for um, at IFTD. They canceled it, so now we're going to have to decide when we're going to unveil that particular product. Um, it may be here on a Facebook Live. It may be at one of the shop demos that we're doing in the fall. Um, not 100% sure yet, but it definitely won't be at IFTD because they canceled it last week or uh, I guess they, two weeks ago. They postponed, they postponed it, it to the end of March, early April, and we made the decision not to attend because nobody's buying fly tying stuff Yeah. then. Yeah, so. that's, um, I, I personally, I think that's a mistake on their part. A fly fishing dealer show in the spring, I, I, I'm not on board with that, but... There's what it is. If they have it in the fall next year, we'll be there. So, but, all right, well, I don't see any questions, so we'll see you. Thank you. Have a good week.